Welcome back to the channel guys. On today's detail we have a Dodge Ram 2500 that is completely trashed on the inside. So we're going to be doing a complete disaster car detailing for you today. So if you're not subscribed, smash that subscribe button down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up. Let's go to get started. show you what the inside of this thing looks like. So the first thing with this detail is obviously get everything out of the car, all the bulk stuff, all the floor mats, and all the big dirt like here when I'm just vacuuming this floor mat. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not dropping a ton more dirt all over the car, all over the floor, just making a mess everywhere when I can just take care of a little bit of vacuuming on each little section as I move around the car. Now that we have all the floor mats, all the bulk stuff out of the way, it is now time to pull out those front seats. And I do it particularly because of all the stuff that I typically find underneath them. There's tons of goodies underneath there, plus a lot of the stains from, you know, spilling stuff inside the car. That's where a lot of those stains usually sit. They fall down in between the seats and the center console, or for this place, it's right before the cup holders on that carpet in front of the bench. So getting those seats out of the way just gives you better access to all of that filth. Now when it comes to vacuuming, I actually have two of these VacMaster Beast vacuums. They're very small, they're portable, but they're powerful enough to suck up any sort of wet or dry objects that I have in any of these cars. So if you're looking for a really cool vacuum, they're really inexpensive. They're only like 100 bucks on Amazon. I have that link down below for you guys to check out so you guys can pick one up as well if you're interested. And also if you need any sort of detailing supplies, detailing brushes, towels, anything like that, head on over to my website, foxclean.com. I'm still running my Black Friday special. I'm carrying it all the way till December 31st where you guys can save huge discounts on all of my products. So after this video, head on over to those links down below and check out foxclean.com and pick up your detail and supplies today.
And you might be wondering what I'm doing with the screwdriver here, but underneath that rubber cover, a bunch of quarters and dimes fell in that little pocket and it was full of like grime and greasy stuff. So I had to kind of fish that out to even get to the screw to remove this plastic piece to get to all the dirt underneath it. And to be honest, you probably would be surprised with how much dirt can collect underneath all of your different panels, what kind of stuff falls in there. And if you're ever interested in doing that yourself, it's really not difficult at all. There's only a few screws that ever hold these things in. You could probably search on YouTube how to do it or look up on Google and just search it and there'll be always tutorials or some sort of guide for you guys to remove them yourself and you can go the extra distance that any detailing shop from what I know of will never do this sort of thing. So if you're ever looking to get your car completely clean to do it, you have to do it yourself or find a detailer that might do it for you if you ask. Now, if you want to check to see if the detailer that just cleaned your car did a thorough job or not, here are five places to check to see if they did as good a job as you hoped. Number one spot is check to see if there's any dirt or grime inside your spare tire well in the trunk of your car. If you lift up that cover and there's a bunch of dirt, you know that they missed that spot, but if they cleaned it, they are one of the top detailers in the country. Number two, check underneath the front driver passenger seats to see if there's any stains or any drips from the center console area that fell underneath there. Typically it's vacuum, but getting an extractor underneath there is next to impossible unless you remove those seats. Number three is inside your glove box. If they pulled out all of that paperwork or whatever you had in there and wiped it down, they did an excellent job. The number four spot to check is if you move your steering wheel up or down and there's dirt between the center dashboard and the steering column, that is a commonly missed location. Now the number five spot to check is underneath your cup holder liners. Typically cup holders in a car have some sort of rubber insert or plastic liners in them that will catch a lot of the stuff, but sometimes it falls underneath there or any liquids can get underneath there. If they pulled out those liners, cleaned underneath them, then you know you found a detailer that you need to keep going back to. Now underneath this rear seat bench, I was very surprised with the color of this carpet. I honestly thought there was tons of stains everywhere inside here, but in reality, it was just so dusty that the carpet actually changed colors when I vacuumed.
Now for any of these interior panels, I'm just using my all-purpose cleaner and microfiber towels to wipe them off. And particularly this leather center console and seat area is majority leather and it's actually more of a vinyl type finish. So I'm using my drill brush that is a softer variety and I'm using my all-purpose cleaner to clean up all of those staining and dirt and grease and everything collected on there and just wiping it clean. And you'll see how much of a difference this made, especially on the sides here when you see these before and after shots. Now for the front driver and passenger seats, I'm gonna be wiping down the sides with my all-purpose cleaner. And I try to do that first because then I can get to all the seat rails, get underneath all these different flaps and all the different controls on the seats, get those clean first before I do the extraction phase. Now for these seats, I'm using my carpet cleaner solution, which is mixed in my sprayer with hot water, spraying it on the seats, using my drill brush to agitate those carpet fibers to loosen up that dirt. And then in my extractor is just plain old hot water. And the reason why you wanna use hot water in particular is one, it helps break down any sort of oil-based material a lot easier and helps with the extraction phase over a cold water. I was a bit surprised that the actual back side of the seat was dirtier than the seat portion of it on the butt part. You'll see that here in the before and after shots what I mean, but to be honest, this back piece was where a lot of the dirt was collected surprisingly.
Now for these floor mats, you could actually smell it and you couldn't obviously smell in the video, but a lot of the staining in here was one, dirt and grease, but there was a lot of diesel fuel. This truck was actually a service truck used on a farm to help with fixing tractors and had an extra storage tank with fuel in it. So the person getting in and out of this truck at all times had work boots on that were constantly getting greasy dirt or fuel-based materials on the bottom of them. And those were obviously carried into the floor mats here. So when it came to cleaning them, I did the best job I could with the materials that I had. Also, I was time limited, which is a big part of detailing. You have to factor in time and how you budget that around what detailing steps you take and how much effort you put into a single piece of the car itself. So I cleaned the floor mats the best I could with the time that I had, and then I had to move on to different portions of the car to finish the rest of the detail. Now ideally for these floor mats and including the carpet in the car for that matter, I would have much rather pulled them out and pressure washed them outside, but because we were below freezing temperatures, that was not possible. So I did two passes with the extractor on all the carpet inside the vehicle, which got a majority of it cleaned. And if I wanted to take it to the next step after that, if I didn't have the option of pressure washing, you can actually buy carpet dye and spray the floor mats and dye back that fiber, which a lot of the times it might not be dirt that you're seeing, it might just be some of the fibers losing their color that was given to them when they first were made.
can see here that this floor mat is a perfect example of how much dirt is inside the fiber still when I've gone through the second pass of the extractor. Just going back and forth with the extractor head itself, you can see the dirt that's still rising to the surface, but the clean carpet underneath, it's just a, it's kind of a back and forth battle, to be honest, unless you can pressure wash it and get a lot of that material out before you even start the extraction phase. Now these stains here is exactly what I was talking about earlier that a lot of detailers will miss is because if you didn't pull out those seats, you would have never seen these stains at all. And sometimes when you're detailing, you forget that your battery is almost gonna die and you completely forget to check the camera as you're going through the extraction phase when you're cleaning the carpet. So sorry about that guys, but I kind of lost some footage there when I was cleaning the rest of those stains. Now for these door panels, including these ones in the center console as I move towards those, I'm just gonna be using my all-purpose cleaner, my detailing brush, and clean microfiber towels. Typically, I go through one to two different towels per panel and per section of the vehicle. So by the end of this detail, I always end up with about 30 or 40 rags total from the entire detail in a corner that I have to then wash after these details.
I typically save all of these little bits and pieces that I remove from the vehicle to clean in one big process. You saw earlier that I have my little sonic cleaner that I use for all the bolts and pieces, which helps clean those and get a lot of that crap that's kind of solid on there removed and loosened up before I use my brush. But for these panels, obviously you can't put those in those machines and just using your bristle brush, letting that all purpose cleaner soak into those different corners and pockets and then just wiping them clean is good enough. Now for my favorite part of the detail is putting everything back together. And to be honest, a lot of times you guys ask how I remember where everything goes. Um, to be honest, it's something that I've just developed over time to remember because I've done it so many times. But the good news for me is typically when I film my details, if I film the car being pulled apart, I can always refresh and go back to my video and see where it went before um, I took it out. So that is one thing that I have to my advantage. But if you do take your car apart and you're really worried about that, just take a plastic baggie and write on it where something went. I almost forgot. Cleaning the little things sometimes makes it all worth it. Now here are the before and after shots from this detail and to be honest I was really super happy with the end results. The car turned out incredible. I was really happy with how much of those stains from the carpet came out underneath those front driver and passenger seats. That was something I was concerned with initially but by the end they came out completely which was honestly amazing to see. And I want you guys to comment down below what is your preferred pickup truck? Is it a Tundra? F-150, a Silverado, a Ram. Let me know in the comments below which one you guys like the most. And also if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you like this car detailing transformation. And I'll see you guys in next week's video.